Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and welcome to the English New Bum Phuc Radio Television Station and Newspaper and following other headlines for today. Provincial People Committee Chairwoman Miss with Leader of Zafa Group To my mushrooms now in seasons High tech surplus recorded in Argo Forestry Fishery Export Provincial People Committee Trần Tuệ Hiền has met and worked with leaders from the Zafa Group Jaffa Group leaders and representatives from Jaffa Confit Vietnam spoke about a number of projects in the province receiving investment from the group, including the Jaffa Pig Farm in Dac Nhoc Commune, Budang District, and a farm with 48,000 pigs in Phu Riêng District. Jaffa produces sweet, provides breeding stock, processes products from pigs, beef cutter, and dairy cows, and raises and processes seafood. The leader of the group thanked the chair Humin for the assistance from the province, sectors and localities which have it carry out its projects on schedule. Ms. Hien expressed her appreciation of the efforts of Jaffa Group and its subsidiaries in coordinating with the province when implementing projects and in strictly complying with local regulations on security and especially environmental protection. To my mudroom, a specialty of local people and popular all over Vietnam are now in season in Binh Phuc province. It is the third time termite mushrooms have appeared in large numbers over the past year, and many local people have been enlisted to collect them day and night. The mushrooms only appear for two or three days and must be processed when they are fresh. Storage is possible, but the time is short. So collection becomes a priority when the mushrooms appear. The volume collected this time around will partly serve local demand, while some will be taken to Ho Chi Minh City, so prices will remain high, from 350,000 to 500,000 Vietnam dong per kilo, depending on quality and cleanliness. Although they are difficult to find, many people go in search of the mushrooms, especially at night. They hide in nutritional value and have a very special taste, making them a key specialty. Leader of Hung Quang District in Binh Phuc Province had recently held a working session with the District Steering Committee for Collective Economic Development and Cooperative regarding the implementation of the talk and activity in the first five months of this year and efforts over the remaining seven months. Hồn Quảng District has 24 co-operatives, of which 19 are operating and 5 have ceased operations. So the charter capital of co-operatives stands at more than 65.3 billion Vietnam dong, an increase of over 5.5 billion Vietnam dong compared to the end of 2021. Hồn Quảng District also has 33 cooperative groups with 320 members, mainly in the agricultural sector, in the first five months of this year, average monthly revenue of local cooperatives was about 97 million Vietnam dong. Members of the steering committee raised a number of problems facing cooperatives and cooperative groups at the meeting, such as ongoing confusion in identifying business orientation and lack of branding activities by cooperatives and cooperative groups and consumption markets remaining limited. Total foreign take in agriculture, forestry, and aquatic products hit some $31.8 billion in the first four months of 2022, an increase of 7% against the same period last year. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Vietnam enjoyed a trade surplus of nearly $4 billion, 3.2 times higher than a year earlier. Aquatic exports saw the highest growth during the period, surging nearly 44% to reach 3.6 billion US dollars. Meanwhile, those of husbandry products plummeted 19% year on year to 105 million US dollars. Five export items with revenue exceeding 1 billion US dollars included coffee, rice, fruits and vegetables, shrimp, and timber products. The U.S. remained Vietnam's largest importer with nearly $4.9 billion, US dollars, accounting for 27.3% of the market share. Some 68% of Vietnam's exports to the U.S. were wood and timber products. 
China gained second with about 3.2 billion US dollars, representing 18% of total shipments. With its advances and thorough preparation in terms of infrastructure, transport, and human resources, the key southern economic region remained the leading destination for foreign direct investment after the COVID-19 pandemic is put under control. Localities in the region have also organized investment promotion workshops to popularize Vietnam's investment environment and its advantages and potential. According to Bing Zeng Provincial People's Committee, in the first four months of this year, the province attracted a total of $2.35 billion in 16 new projects, nine existing ones, and from the contribution of capital of 53 businesses. Meanwhile, in the same period, $1.28 billion had been poured into Ho Chi Minh City, up over 12% year-on-year. The figures for Long An and Dong Nai provinces were $341 million and $210 million, respectively. The key southern economic region comprises of Ho Chi Minh City, Bing Phuc, Tây Ninh, Bing Sương, Dong Nai, Barit Vũng Tàu, Long An, and Tien Giang provinces. The South Central Coastal Province of Bình Thuận has welcomed back many groups of international tourists in recent days after two years higher deaths due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The return of international arrivals, especially in large groups, is a good signal for Mui Nè in particular and Bình Thuận in general. According to the Provincial Department of Cultural Sports and Tourism, the recent arrivals to Muine will create a premise for the locality's tourism industry to gradually revive in the coming time. Besides building programs to stimulate demand for domestic visitors, travel firms in Bing Thuan province also expand connections with international travel businesses to restart existing tours and open new ones to attract more foreign arrivals. In the first four months of 2022, Bing Thuận welcomed nearly 1.4 million tourists, earning over $116 million in revenue. Digital transformation is a new step for museums in Da Nang to become more appealing to the public, especially to young people who are interested in learning more about artifacts and data resources. It also more in line with general development trends in the modern world amidst a burning information technology boom. 3D scanning technology has been used at the Dana Museum of Gem Sculpture since September 2020 with the aim of bringing the most authentic experience possible to visitors in the Industry 4.0 era. Over 80 artifacts at the museum have been digitized with QR codes, enabling visitors to readily access extended information. Thanks to QR codes, I can quickly learn a lot about the history of each item and understand more about its cultural value without having to rely on narrators or guides. At the Donald Museum, meanwhile, more than 1,000 artifacts have been digitized with explanatory documents. An inventory of all artifacts and the management of heritage and monuments in Donald are also being completed through digital maps. This not only helps the public easily discover heritage sites and monuments in the city, but also serves as a data bank for research and conservation. The museum is working on building software to manage the artifacts on display and those stored in warehouses through the integration of codes and chips associated with each. With support in information technology, the announced museums can now take heritage displays, exhibitions and educational activities anywhere in the form of online tours without being dependent on space, which will also allow for flexibility in adapting to disease conditions. And that's all for today on Bình Phước Radio, Television Station and Newspaper News. Once again, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.